For this video, I'm going to talk about the things that I learnt this year. I think I learnt a lot from playing Supercoach last year, which I took into this year. I have a video on that, I think. Um, actually, I think it was two years ago. You can watch that if you want, but this video will be on what I learnt this year and things that should make me and maybe others a better player. So hopefully we can all win 50 grand and be happy and whatever. Go on a holiday to Europe. So anyway, not that that would solve anything, but anyway. So the first thing I learnt this year, and it's something I didn't pick any key forwards this year. A few people did, but no key forwards ever. No way. And I understand key forwards can work out. Do they work out often? No. And for me, it's just stick to the players that play around the ball. Because with key forwards, too many variables. In the past, people have said no key forwards, but as uh, key forwards have hot streaks, we start to get sucked, sucked in. We saw that with Jeremy Cameron. Um, so for starting picks, don't do key forwards. The guys we want, midfielders, preferably inside mids. They just get the ball everywhere. Ruckman, who can win their own ball. Um, plenty of hitouts to advantage as well, if they're good at that. Get their own tackles, clearances. And then the go-to guys in defence. The guys they want the ball in the hands of. Um, think of Zach Williams, Caleb Daniel this year, Shannon Hearn. Three points from kickouts, a few points from intercepts as well. So those are the types of picks we want um, for our starting picks. Um, towards the end of the season, you can take a few more risks because there's less games and um, price is also a factor. So no key position forwards. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Um, they're just too up and down. Standard deviation is too high. Second thing I learned, role sharing. So for me, I picked Wayne Miller this year. Um, he had a pretty good end to last year, averaged 92 odd. Um, had a really strong preseason. But unfortunately this year with Brody Smith coming back, um, Smith, Laird and Miller, it was too much. And what ended up happening was Miller played well in defense, but he had to move forward because it just, um, the Crows just had too many players doing a similar thing down back. It also happened with uh, Jackson McRae. As much as I love McRae, 700 was probably too much. And I think it was fine if you picked him for 700. But um, he did drop 120k, so probably better if you got him for cheaper. But what happened was Tom Liberatore came back and McRae's mid-time got cut because of role sharing. A few weeks in, Liber gets injured and his role changes, so McRae's back to his 130 best. I don't regret picking McRae, but something to definitely consider is um, look at the guys performing a similar role and whether they're going to take points away. So that is something to consider. Also, I considered Taylor Adams, who um, none of the Collingwood mids have hit 110 average, and I don't think Adams would, would have either, despite a, hot, um, a really good um, second half of last year. So, yeah, just something to consider is point sharing with your premiums. Third thing I learned, definitely, and this is something that I, um, I knew, but something that, that I also ignored this year, was research every rookie. So this was part of the things I learned in the last learning video I did. So basically, if you look at my starting team, it's the rookies are almost perfect, except for maybe Bailey Scott. However, there was one rookie I missed, and that was Grian Myers, and I think a lot of us missed him. We saw the dreads, um, didn't hear anything about him, about him till JLT. Had no idea he kicked 50 goals in, I think it was a TSC Cup or some other 18s league, I'm not sure. So he kicked 50 goals there, which was incredible. I didn't notice, I'm not sure anyone else noticed, so just saw the dreads and said, this guy's probably a dud. Turns out he was the best forward, um, Ford rookie by a fair way, I think. Him and Drew, I think. So every single rookie we have to research, every single one. Because I think I did a lot of research into rookies and it's what's, it's what's got me to rank 350-ish at the moment with, with six rounds to go. But again, you have to, yeah, every single rookie, doesn't matter what they look like either. So he was mature age as well. I think he's two years in the system or something. So. Definitely have to consider every single one. Fourth thing I learnt 
is don't get too much fear of missing out. So for me, I saw I saw Hearn was going playing out of his mind. Whitfield was playing out of his mind. Lloyd would not put in a bad game. So about eight rounds in, I'm thinking, I can't get any of these guys. These guys are all playing incredible. Too expensive. Could have looked for value elsewhere. Ended up getting in all three. All three kind of failed in terms of getting a return on investment. And by that, I mean I paid 600 for Hearn, 600 for um, Lloyd, and 560 for Whitfield. I think Whitfield I could justify, just that he got injured, but Hearn... Hearn got injured as well, but um, he's, I got him in after a six-week average of 120. He hasn't gotten near that. Whether that's due to injury, I'm not sure. But um, if you get fear of missing out and they've hit peak price, probably just leave it unless it's you have nothing else to do for trades. So I think that definitely hurt. Getting in Hearn for 600 really hurt really badly. And Jake Lloyd, even then, he didn't drop a bad score pretty much all year until mid-season, so um, there's just not enough value in paying max price for players sometimes, so don't get too much fear of missing out. I understand it's hard, there's a lot of points gone down the drain, but a lot of the time um, those points are gone, you've missed them, so maybe wait for them to come down a bit, or if the timing's wrong, then I guess you can pay for them, but um, don't get too much fear of missing out, you can look for value elsewhere. And the fifth thing I learned was start as many premiums as possible or get as many rookies off the field. Um, that should be the priority, getting rookies off the field and starting a team full of um, as many keepers as you can, I think helps that. So for me, I saw value in Jack Billings, ended up being a good pick, but I did trade him to Boak. I think that's fine, but probably didn't need to. Um, I looked at Millera, Millera didn't work out. Um, but he did average good for me up until his role change. And going for guys like Sloan and Matt Crouch, Sloan worked out really well. Matt Crouch, not so much, but still, it's the value that they give me. It helps me um, get more rookies off the field elsewhere. So I don't think you can go, it depends on the year, but if you go full guns and rookies, um, you're probably overpaying for some midfielders and you're really depending on rookies because you might have a, um, a rookie slot that's, um, you might have a weak rookie line somewhere where you just leak points every week and then they don't make money. And there's not much you can do, you have to wait until they make enough money to get them off the field. So for me, my goal this year was start 13 keepers plus Brody Smith. And I think that worked out pretty well. The only problem was no Liberatore for me. So I think I could have gone probably 12 keepers plus two mid prices that you can flip during the buys. Uh, I think that would have been okay. Uh, it obviously depends on the mid pricer, um, if they're any good or not, but um, stepping stones, I think they work okay, especially if you're unsure about who else to pick. So yeah, I think Darcy Moore was a fine pick because you know he was a cheap mid pricer, but I thought he did his job quite well, so he kept guys like Parker and um, Setterfield and those sorts of guys, Bolter in the early stages, off the field, which would have probably cost you 50 points a week at times when those guys were dropping 20s and 30s and stuff. So that's what I learned for this year. Um, so just to recap, no key position players, don't do it. Um, pick players that play around the ball, Ruckman, the go-to guys in defence and midfielders, preferably inside midfielders. Consider role sharing. So if you, a guy had a breakout year the year before, played really well, consider was it due to players missing. Third, research every rookie, no matter what they look like, just do it, research every single one. So in the JLT, when they, um, if you haven't seen a rookie all preseason, but they play well in the JLT, still don't ignore them. Um, fourth, don't get fear of missing out too much. And fifth, start as many premiums or start as many keepers as you can or it's okay to start one or two mid prices if you're getting um, rookies off the field if the rookie lines are weak so that's the recap um, hopefully that helped something or kept you awake or whatever but anyway thanks for watching and we'll see you guys this week